Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks, problem of the day and today's problem is some string and it is a hard level problem. So I feel that uh, this problem is not very really hard in logic, but yes, the implementation might be a bit long uh, compared to the normal problem of the days. And uh, let us quickly read the, this particular question and then there are certain things which I would like to explain before even starting with the problem. So the question says that we have been given a string of digits and our task is to check whether it is a sum string. Now they have defined what is a sum string as well and they have mentioned it, uh, it can be broken into more than one substring. So this is the first point I would like you to note, we will discuss on this later. And then they say the rightmost substring can be written as a sum of the two substrings before it and same is recursively true for all substrings before it. So the very 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 first thing is here it mentions more than one substring right and now they have mentioned that the rightmost substring can be written as a sum of the previous two substrings right. So for this second statement to be true there must be at least three substrings right. So this is the very first point that I wanted you to note that here they have mentioned that it should be more than one but it should be actually more than two right because we need actually three at least three substrings for this second condition to satisfy right and uh, there is one more thing that I wanted to discuss but we will discuss after we have this example. So they have shown this example like this is the string right. Now you see that if you take 1, 2 from the starting and then 2, 4, their sum is going to be 36, right. So 36 is present here, right. This is 36. Now once I have 36, the previous number was 24, I need the sum equals to 60. So my sum is equal to 60 here, right. So it is not at all necessary that all of the strings should be of length 2 only. As for in this particular case, you see that the first string is 1 and then we have 1, 1, 1. Right, so these are going to be the first two strings. Now the third string is 112 which is just after 111 here and then for 111 plus 112 we need 223. So we have 223 here. Right, so you see that both of the cases are true and these are some substrings. Now there is one more very important case that I wanted to discuss. So consider a case like this. Now you might argue that uh, this is one and uh, this is 2 and then we have this 3 right. Since zeros are allowed in this particular problem then this, this type of test case might also be there right. So this should be considered as 3 or 0 3 is a doubt. So that is why I just uh, ran it while solving this problem in this compilation window and I see that their output is 0 in this particular case. So although they have not mentioned it anywhere. But uh, whenever we need a sum equals to 3, 0, 3 is not allowed, neither will be 0, 0, 3 or any such similar thing. We would need exactly 3 if the required sum is 3, right. So that means that this value should not con contain any preceding zeros, right. So these are the two things that you need to know. The first thing is that the string should be divided into at least 3 parts and then uh, there cannot be any preceding zeros in the final sum that we are looking for, right. So after you have figured out these two conditions, you will realize if you decide the first two strings, then everything is actually fixed for that first two strings. So our question rather reduces to whether the answer exists for these first two strings. So let me just make it more clear. Let us say I have 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, 6, 0. So let us say I decide that my first two strings will be 1 and 2. Right. And now I want to find out my answer whether my answer exists for these first two strings or not. If I have 1 and 2, I will require a third string equal to 3. Right. But 3 is not present here. So that means it is a no here. Right. But let us say 3 was present here. Now I would choose 2 and 3 and I would require 5. Then I would choose 5 and 3. Then I will require 8. So if I fix the first two strings, my requirements are always fixed for the whole string. And I just have to check whether my current string is fulfilling my requirements or not. This is my only question here, right. So let us say in this particular case, I had, I had chosen 1, 2 and 2, 4 as the starting strings, right. So naturally, the next string required would be 36. Once I find 36 is present here, 
then I can choose these two strings and then make my required sum equal to 60. So once I find 60 here, I can choose these two strings and make my required sum equal to 6 and 9, 96. Right. Then my string eventually ends. So that means I have reached my answer and I don't need to look for 96. So this is how you can easily solve this problem. You just have to fix the first two starting strings. Now to fix the first two starting strings, you will need two pointers, let's say i and j. That means the fixing of the starting strings is taking O of n square time. Now since the value of n is up to 500 and we can go up to n cube only, we just have to make sure that our checking algorithm works in O of n as well. Only then this O of n square into n will be equal to O of n cube. Right. So, let us see how our checking function works. Checking function is also very very simple. It just checks what is the sum of the strings a and b. Since the length of the string is 500, we cannot deal everything in integers because that would definitely overflow even for long long. That is why I am dealing everything in uh, strings. So, I find my need string and my string current is equal to n empty string. So, I am just going through position P and going to less than n and just adding the characters one by one. If the current string has now become equals to the needed string, then I will again call my helper function passing the second string B and then the current string and then I plus 1 is the index and this one is the valid uh, variable which I will tell you in a while why is it there. Right. So, you see this checker function is also very very simple. Right. So, let us quickly have a look at the starting uh, of the question and then quickly go through the code. So, actually there was not much explaining in this particular problem that is why I have just directly to the code and if you understand this you will be able to understand the whole problem. So, I have initialized two variables and uh, this is basically uh, two, this is, these are basically two for loops denoting the length of the two strings right. So, you see that uh, i is starting from 1 till less than n plus 1. So, this is basically denoting that my first string will be of first length 1, then length 2 and then length 3 and so on. Right. The second loop, this second loop is not denoting the length actually, it is denoting the index before which the second string will end. Right. So, this is uh, how I have made it. So, let us say this is length of the first string and this is denoting if the value is j, second string will end at b minus 1, right. So, there is no specific reason why uh, this is j minus 1, right. So, there is no specific reason why I have uh, made the variables like this. Uh, the only reason is you see that now I have made it much more uh, sleek, right. I do not have to do any other extra calculations. But let us suppose, let us suppose this j loop was also denoting the length of the second string, then I will have to make additional checks what if the length of the j is not valid. For example, if I have a string a, a, b, c and d, then I, if I choose the first string as like this, then the maximum length allowed is 2 here, right. So, I will have to make uh, cases for conditions like this and I will have to like make this for loop accordingly. Right, but uh, I did not want to do that, that is why I just directly took it this way and this is very very neat and clean to write. So, the first string will be starting from 0 and going till i length and the second string will be starting from index i and going till j minus i length. So, basically the second string will end at the index j minus 1. Now, once I have decided a and b, I am just calling my helper function with the strings a and b passed to it and passing the index j. Now, since this is the very first iteration and I have just discovered two strings, right? And I told you that there should be at least three strings. That is why I am passing this zero variable here. This is just denoting that uh, I have not even encountered the third string yet, right? And if this returns two, I am just going to return one. And if p is equal to n, I am going to return valid. So, let us say what will happen if a, b and c, d were chosen as the two strings and now since the whole of the string is consumed, my p will be here at position n, right. But since I have not encountered the third string, it is going to return 0, right. So, that is what is stored in this valid variable. Now, again, I have already explained, I calculate my need through the sum and if I find my current is equal to need, I am just going to call helper on 
the first string will be now b second string will be current and i am going to pass i plus 1 which is the next index and now this has become 1 right earlier it was 0 now it has become 1 now let us quickly have a look at the sum function as well so this is just basic uh, uh, it, it doesn't look basic at all but it's just very standard how you can sum two strings right so i'm not going to go into very deep on how this is implemented but i'm just going to give you an overview you can easily find an article on G geeks for geeks on how you can sum two strings right so i have just reversed both of the strings first of all uh, no specific reason again why i have to re reverse it it just makes the working easier and you will realize a lot if you it is very very difficult to sum two strings in correct order rather than in reverse order so this just makes things easier right now i have initialized my carry and index so carry is going to denote the current carry now while index is less than a dot size and index is less than b dot size that means my index is present in both of the strings a and b so i'm just adding a index b index and the carry value now my carry value will become sum divided by 10 and my sum value will become sum mod 10 so basically sum is denoting what will be the character or what will be the digit at the current place since my digit can only be from 0 to 9 i am taking its value sum mod 10 and the extra value has to be put on somewhere right so that is why carry becomes sum divided by 10 now i just convert this sum variable into strings and add it to my answer and increment my index similarly i go through the string a dot size uh, till index is less than a dot size so that is uh, this happens when the size of the strings is not same and one of them is bigger so either this while loop will execute or this while loop will execute right again i do the same thing uh, a index plus carry and carry will be denoted as sum by 10 and sum will be denoted as sum mod 10 again add it to my answer and increment my index the second while loop is similar to this while loop it says that it is b here right now at the end if carry is remaining i am just going to add it to my answer converting it, converting it into string first and then reverse my answer and then return my answer variable right so since we reverse the strings a and b as well that is why we have to reverse the final answer as well so uh, once you do this uh, you will know what is the value of sum here right so that is what for this particular video and uh, i believe that is uh, pretty much everything and uh, again you have seen that this is just purely brute force you just had to decide these pointers i and j so that you can find the first two starting strings and then you can later uh, convert your checker function into o of n so this is o of n as only right so the whole uh, type complexity is o of n cube and this is how you could solve this particular problem and let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct and again uh, uh, the test case that I talked about 1203 if uh, it is still there let me show you this one right it might happen that uh, they adjust their code or they adjust their test cases so that this particular solution is also accepted but for now it is it should give false or it should not be considered as a something right so this is something that I needed you to know later it might get changed but for now it is not getting accepted. Right, so that is it for this particular video. I hope that you guys were able to understand this particular solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.